Well, hello, everybody. We are in the 11th uh, lesson in After God's Heart, the series on the life of David. And in this story, we're going to look at how David tries to bring the Ark of the Covenant into the city of Jerusalem. So this is right after the time David now has become the full king of Israel. He had been king over certain parts of it. Um, and he wants to bring this Ark into the nation, into the capital city, because this the Ark represents God's active presence among his people. And now that Jerusalem was their capital, they wanted, David wanted to basically say, this is the where we want God to be the center of our focus. We want him to be the center of our attention. And so that results in bringing the Ark. But then what happens is that David does not follow the proper protocols in transporting this Ark of the Covenant. And as a result, a man dies. And we see first uh, David's response to this. Look, we're going to look at 2 Samuel 6, verses 9 through 11. David was afraid of the Lord that day and said, How can the ark of the Lord ever come to me? He was not willing to take the ark of the Lord to be with him in the city of David. Instead, he took it to the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite. The ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite for three months, and the Lord blessed him and his entire household. A couple of things to note here. First of all, approaching God irreverently leads to massive consequences. And in this story, it's another man's death. Secondly, we see that David feared God. He was afraid of God. And within worship, we must always approach God with kind of this sense of awe of his holiness and recognize that he is perfect and that approaching him is somewhat of a dangerous thing while we are in our sin. It's almost like thinking about trying to approach the sun. You don't want to approach the sun. It could burn you. It would destroy you if you got too close. So that's kind of God's holiness. But then we notice something changes in the second part of the story. We see that now David realizes he needs to do things better and he needs to do things right. And we get a more full account of how this worked out in First Chronicles 15. So we're going to read that. Then David summoned Zadok and Abiathar the priests, and Uriel and Asiah, Joel, Shemaiah, Eliel, and Aminadab the Levites. He said to them, You are the heads of the Levitical families. You and your fellow Levites are to consecrate yourselves and bring up the ark of the Lord, the God of Israel, to the place I have prepared for it. It was because you, the Levites, did not bring it up the first time that the Lord our God broke out in anger against us. We did not inquire of him about how to do it in the prescribed way. So the priests and Levites consecrated themselves in order to bring up the ark of the Lord, the God of Israel. And the Levites carried the ark of God with the poles on their shoulders, as Moses had commanded in accordance with the word of the Lord. So this time David seeks to follow the protocols of bringing the ark into Jerusalem and using the Levites and them carrying it on poles. And so what happens this time now is... That since David has done it right, God blesses the transportation of the ark. And it actually leads to, as we see in verse 14 of 2 Samuel 6, it leads to David da dancing in the city, dancing on the way and leading the congregation in joy of what of bringing God into the city of Jerusalem, making God the center of their worship. So there's a couple different takeaways that we see here from this story is that, first of all, we worship God with trembling, recognizing that he is holy. But at the same time, because of what Christ did for us, we can approach God as followers of Christ with great joy, knowing that he has showed us his great love. He has showed us his great goodness, but we must do both. We, we approach God in reverence and in humility, even though Yes, we can approach him fully and confidently. And so we have to also realize when we think about the idea of worship, that it's not necessarily about the feeling that we receive, but it's about the giving reverence to God for who he is and what he has done on our behalf. And, that, and then lastly, that proper obedience out of love for God can lead to great joy in our lives. So, so here's a couple of discussion questions that we would love for you to talk over. First of all, what typically characterizes your attitude when you worship God or when you pray? And then what are ways that you can prepare yourself to approach God with both trembling and rejoicing before you worship or pray?